Hey, what's going on there everybody? Welcome back to Crusader Kings 2 for the start of the Mega Campaign 2020. Now, if you're new to this channel, you haven't followed any other channels that have done a Mega Campaign before. A Mega Campaign is where you play from CK2 all the way to the end in Hoi 4. So you go through CK2, EU4, Victoria, and Hoi 4. Some people go ahead and play Stellaris too, but I refuse to exist in the same world as that game. And also if you're new to this channel and you don't know, I've already done a mega campaign before, so if you want to go ahead and watch that one, it will be linked down below because I will be staggering the uploads on this, so if you want to go back and watch the old one, now is the time to do it. And uh, sorry for the long intro of course, but I know a lot of people have been waiting for this mega campaign and I've been thinking a lot about exactly how I should do it. So at the end of my old mega campaign, I was still a bit too overpowered for my liking. So today, well, uh, the past week or so, I've actually come up with something that I think is going to be pretty interesting. Uh, now, last time, what we went ahead and done in my old Mega campaign was we only played around 100 years of CK2, and we're probably going to do the same thing today because in CK2, you can get a bit too powerful, so when you get to EU4, there's not a lot of challenge left. And personally, while it is fun in most of my other games to conquer the entire map, for the Mega campaign, I'd like to build a bit more of a story. Because, uh, you know, you could just go ahead and conquer all of Europe in one game, there's no real reason to just spread it across the entirety of four games. It is actually quite fun to do a bit of RP. But of course I won't get too much into that for now, I just wanted to give you guys the basics of what I had in mind because self-limiting in mega campaigns is very important. But nonetheless, I want to go ahead and give everyone a big shout out to getting me to 500k in December, which is what originally was going to release this mega campaign, but unfortunately, things in life kind of took a turn for something not so great, and uh, I'm now back, I'm doing the mega campaign, and I just want to say big thank you to everyone that has supported this channel through the past or present right now. I appreciate all of you guys very much, and uh, everyone that leaves likes and hits the subscribe button, it helps out greatly. Of course, I don't really do any sub goals anymore, but every time someone does go ahead and hit the sub button, it is always appreciated. But enough of that. Today, it's, uh, it's finally time I tell you what I got planned. So, you may be thinking, England, eh? That's a bit boring. But in CK2, um, I feel like we could have a bit of fun as them. So today, I think I'm going to go ahead and try and play a duke. Not because there's really that much to do as a duke, and we could just go ahead and play as the actual king of England and do a bunch of conquering and have all the British Isles by the time we get to EU4. That's not that fun, is it? I kind of want to give myself a bit of a challenge and kind of just mess with the world a bit more, you know? <laughs> uh, first off, um... You know, I'm just, I just, I don't really feel like a Duke Edwin of Mercia. I don't feel like that at all. I, I get this kind of like supposed to be a crown or whatever, but I, I do just look like the really depressed kid who's gone to sit on Santa's lap and is a bit too old for it. Yeah, I, I feel like I'm still in the mindset of my last CK2 video because <laughs> it's Rat Boy of the Rat Realm. All right, this time around, we definitely need to go ahead and make sure we give him one very important trait. <laughs> I, I'm not doing anything else for that. He's, he's just a dwarf called Rat Boy. Rat Boy of the Rat Realm. Oh, I completely forgot. Uh, so we are in the middle of the uh, Norman Quang Kong. <laughs> Uh, we are in the midst of the Norman Conquest of England. I don't know if uh, Duke William uh, is going to go ahead and keep me around if he wins, but we're going to go ahead and see what happens. Uh, I'm also going to worry about the big Viking man in the north. Don't worry, Duke Rap Boy of Mercy is definitely going to have his way. He'll he'll slime his way out of anything. Uh, you know, I feel like this, uh, this uh, guy from uh, Normandy, uh, yeah, oh, uh... I feel like he might have a good point, you know. I feel like he should be King of England. I'm sorry, but I refuse to to accept the fact that that's a real name. I think you just had a stroke and headbutted the keyboard, Missy. Uh, I don't I don't know if you want to go ahead and realize this, but I need an heir. I don't I need you to bang your wife, Mister Mister Rat Boy. Honestly, is that my wife? Oh, that is my wife. Oh, wait, no, that's not my wife. Who are you? Well, I got someone pregnant. Just not the person I wanted to get pregnant. Oh, would you look at that? I'm I'm Norwegian now. Um, uh, still got still a duke though. And uh, do you like me? You do kind of like me. Although I'm minus nine because I'm a foreigner. You conquered me. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and accept to be on your council. 
but at the same time, I, I don't I don't know if you're gonna be in control for that much longer. Oh, I'm glad our little rat boy son's been born. Uh, he didn't inherit the uh, the dwarf genetics though. He's just a, he's just a good old fashioned bat. Well, that's gonna make things interesting. Uh, well, the the Normans lost, and we are now definitely Norwegian, which is fine with me as long as I get to keep my titles. I don't care who's uh, who's. Yeah, that's why I'm sniffing. Uh, I don't think I want to do that though. Or do I? Do I? How interesting do I make this mega campaign? Ah, well. Is it really that bad? I I just need you to bang your wife. Okay, she's right there. Look at her. What a stunner. She hates me, but I need you to bang her so bad. Oh, there you go. <laughs> minus 25 to unfaithful. Yeah, and the attraction to dwarf minus 30. <laughs> All I had to do was go ahead and make her the official court regent, the court tutor, and give her a bunch of gold, and she agreed to sleep with me, the dwarf man. Oh, apparently I'm also still banging the, uh, the SpaghettiOs woman. <laughs> she, yeah, two for the price of one, I heard you. I'm sorry, what type of name is that? Elfwine Rat Boyson. Excuse me. I, I can't stand for that. He's gonna be, he's gonna be rat boy number two. Oh, thank God. It's just a woman. I don't have to deal with this child at all, and we can just throw it in the trash quite literally. Oh, apparently after the, uh, the two children I gave this woman, and the fact she hates me completely because I am a dwarf, she has finally decided to break up with me. Okay, perfect! Maybe you should be banging dwarfs anyway, yo! Here we go, after uh, breaking up with my loved one and finally getting my wife pregnant, I'm gonna write a book on the intricacies of relationships. Ooh, so I went ahead and got myself a claim of uh, this little pit of whales down here, and I think I'm gonna go ahead and try and beat them up. Will it go well? I don't know. Ah, well, I didn't go that bad at all, really. Uh, I lost a bit of money, but I got one province. I am a success. Not really. Oh, well, I, I don't need a dot, really, unfortunately. I, I guess I, I'm going to marry you after some Middle Eastern diplomat at some point. But uh, you, well, I guess I'll, I'll give you some name. Uh, just give us something that I like. We'll just call it Pepsi Max, you know? You're, you're, you're a delicious drink. Actually, no. Nah, I, I like Pepsi Max too much. I don't like you. Hmm. Dr. PP. Oh, I died! And now I'm a child. Uh oh. Oh, I looked away for a second. And England's back. Hey there! Uh, of course, England uh, pops away for a second. <laughs> Straight to war with France, are we? Uh, it didn't take too long for me to uh, remarry my mum off to uh, this guy who looks like he could be wearing a wig. Hey, Mazel Tov! We've come of age and we, we look disgustingly like our father. We even stole his stupid Santa hat. Oh, you know what? I don't know if I want to get a... <laughs> I, I, I don't know if I want to get extra fertility from a man looking like yourself, but since it's not really my life I'm ruining, I'm gonna go ahead and do it. Oh my, I have succeeded my duke. If you drink this concoction, your potency will magnify tenfold. Uh-oh. Oh, it actually worked. The man's a goddamn wizard. Wait, a wizard? Hold on a second. Oh, my wife's pregnant already, which is pretty good. I do need an heir. I'm just a, a bit scared as to what sort of Harry Potter baby that's going to pop out of her. Uh, also, considering the whole of England right now and the British Isles currently covered in smallpox, I should probably go ahead and shut the gates, really. Oh, no, it's, it's not the magical demon I was expecting. It's even worse. It's a female. Oh. <laughs> oh, God damn it. God damn it. You're making it worse for me. God damn it. Why did I trust you, wizard? No. I'm, uh... I'm now Harry Potter. <laughs> well, that's good. Uh, we're currently on a crusade against a two-year-old in Egypt. Hey, uh, okay, well, I'm helping. I, I'm <laughs> with the crusade. It's me, the eight-year-old girl. Right, I've gone ahead. I've stole a couple more claims across England. We are looking pretty damn thick. We're over our, our actual demand size right now, though, but I'm hoping to change that if we get ourselves a little baby. But uh, to do that, I need to not die for at least five years. Like, that just keeps on happening. My uh, question is, though, now that I'm a woman, can I just bang my way across the country? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and hopefully say yeah. Oh. <laughs> Did take luck. <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh, great. I'm, I'm quite literally hiring a sorcerer this time to treat my ailments as I lay ill in bed from this pregnancy. Fine. Hallelujah. We got a son. 
Rap Boy Free Arena. He's gonna die. He's just gonna die. It's the name. It is the name. You know what? I haven't worshipped the devil much this time around, have I? Uh, oh no. Okay. We're having a bit of a dance with death. So, uh, I don't know if you can tell. That didn't go too well, you know? I'm starting to think our dynasty might be slightly cursed. You know, I feel like it's not just my dynasty that might be cursed. I think it might be this whole goddamn island we need to just burn to the small poxy ground. Oh, uh, the guy that just got... <laughs> the guy who just became the king of England is, uh, he's currently in prison. <laughs> that guy! Hey, so if I just go ahead and, like, just kill him... King of, King, of, King, of, King of England, baby! It's Rap Boy for the Vengeful! Oh, no, that's... <laughs> uh, unfortunately, because of the uh, the two... Well, the double homicide I committed to get in power, uh, both killing the guy who was going to get elected, who was also conveniently in my prison, and the actual King of England, uh, everyone in my, uh, my council hates me, and... Uh, all of my vassals hate me too. But you know what? That's just the price you gotta pay when you're king, baby. Wait a second. How'd my wife get pregnant? Well, I've been in Egypt for like a year and a half now. Excuse me? Right, we had a fun time in Egypt and uh, I guess we don't even have to have that awkward conversation with my wife because she uh, unfortunately fell down the stairs, you know? That giant France over Norway doesn't look too pretty next to the giant England over Norway. <laughs> oh, I, I, I can rename Stonehenge. Um, doesn't look like Stonehenge in the picture, though. Mm. Mm. Ah, 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 baby, ah! I just realized I'm currently banging my heir's wife, you know? I just gotta make sure the bloodline's really pure, <laughs> you know? You gotta get yourself a little brother. Oh, why is it just a... Tiny little Egyptian blob in the middle of Normandy. A second. Why? Why is it when the the Countess of Wiltshire dies, it's getting inherited by someone from Benghazi? Excuse me. Oh, I have some righteous imprisonment against Duke Conan, the son of Saint of Wessex, but I don't think this guy's done anything bad. I can't think of a single thing that might be wrong with this man. Well, I may just uh, having to reclaim Wiltshire back from the Egyptians. Also, oh, uh, we lost a couple kings, but now I currently have a fat king, and that mask is clearly too small for you, fatty. I can see that triple chin. Uh, also, Jerusalem owns half of Ireland. You know, that's just. Yeah. A bit of Sweden up here, you know, it's, just, it's all good, good. Oh, why is half of Denmark <laughs> under Muslim rule? Excuse me? Uh, oh. Yeah, some t at some point, one of my many rap babies has ended up married to the heir of Scotland. And I've just gone ahead and impregnated them. The rat life, everybody. Oh. If I want to repent my sins, I need to become celibate. Sure. Why not? Well, well, I guess, uh, there goes the Mongols. I think we'll watch the Mongol invasion, and then we'll probably cool it, because we've been going for over a hundred years now. A hundred and, like, oh my god, we've been going for a while. Yeah, I don't know how this whole celibate thing works when I have three lovers and a wife. How am I pleasing all of these women? You know, sometimes you just get, like, the most perfect traits on a character. Well... Finally got one! Uh, you know? I don't think we're going to be getting <laughs> much of a Mongol empire in our uh, mega campaign. Oh, you know what? We've got on for a very long time now. It's 12.30, so we almost did 200 years in ZK2. It was a lot more than we did last time around. And our kingdom is looking pretty nice. Now, any more, and I feel like we'd have a bit too much, which is why I want to stop it here. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, we are now going to convert this to EU4. Um, I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to be doing with, <laughs> you know, half a normal way which I own but we we have a nice basis over here in England and Ireland and uh, we also own something down here in Poland but I don't I'm just not gonna worry about that for the rest of the world because of the uh, the actual successful campaigns we're gonna have a very very strong Christendom because all of Egypt in the Middle East is now Catholic and the Byzantines are doing pretty damn fine in fact they own half well I say half they own a goddamn bunch of Russia uh, but yeah this could be a very very interesting one to convert it's a shame we didn't really get much from the Mongols but uh, I don't want to carry on any further, especially when we currently have a 
Muslim Denmark. But yes, if you're very excited for this mega campaign, stay tuned because the EU 4-1 will be coming up soon. So leave a like, hit the subscribe button if you want to see more, and please, for the love of God, if you want to support this series, now's the time to do it. Send to your friends, send to your mom, go ahead, buy some merch, link in the description, you know the drill. But until next time, guys, it's time. Uh... You know, there's been one day that has passed since I recorded the, uh, the, the last part of the mega campaign. I woke up the next day, ill as hell. I am, I am currently dying. The diseased Phil Island that was the British Isles in Crusader Kings 2 has apparently passed on into my lungs and now I can't breathe. But, uh, don't worry, the show must go on even if I can't breathe. So, hey everybody, welcome back to the Mega Campaign with me, Coronavirus Productions, and I bet you can't wait to get into the world and see what exactly has happened. Now, just like last time, I have made some changes to the map, but this is how it originally converted. So, there is a lot going on, and a lot of stuff I will tell you that I have changed. So, uh, one of the first things that I went ahead and fixed was Egypt. You see, it did get conquered by Crusaders, and it is now an Italian culture state, and it completely converted to Catholic. So I went ahead and I popped down a whole bunch of sunny down here just so it's not completely an easy ride for them. Uh, the next thing that I changed was uh, the Mongols up here because as you can see there were a few provinces that apparently didn't convert that well in CK2 and even though in CK2 we didn't really see them do that much they do have a bunch of land. Uh, also to compensate for that I did make them slightly unstable at the start of the game so they might explode anyway. I have legitimately no idea what is going to happen with this, but I am terrified. Uh, I was also going to go ahead and fix Byzantine Russia, but because um, the, the Byzantines are going to be pretty damn powerful, I'm hoping that they kind of fill the void that was Russia, but we shall see. But for our little nation over here in England, we've got ourselves a nice little position. We've got the English ideas and we can form Great Britain and our culture is Anglo-Saxon. So things are going to be a little bit different, but for my plan, uh, I have something very different in mind for England. Uh, I'd also like to note that no rat boy actually made it as our king through to EU4, but the rat realm has indeed made its way down here. Yeah, also, we, uh, we still own... Uh, half of Norway. I don't know what the hell I'm gonna do with that, but... So, also tucked away in the map, because the HRE took over half of France, we've got ourselves some pretty damn big powers down here. Uh, unfortunately, because of the, uh, cluster truck of colors down here, you might not be able to distinguish just how powerful these countries are, but the fact that Sardinia and Corsica actually owns, you know, a big chunk of Italy, and half of France, I get the feeling they might be the big dingus around here. Uh, we also obviously have a few more powers in the HRE, which is still a thing, and it is currently controlled by Ricardo D'Esta of France Comte. Uh, but yeah, we still have the uh, Swabians and the Austrians as a powerhouse down here, but it's not von Hasberg. It's the Von Babenbergs, baby! Uh, another big power is the Bohemians and the Brandenburgs. The Brandenburgian nuns. The Brandenburg. The Brandenburgs. The, uh, the Brandenburger Bangaboo. Basically, from what I can tell, I got no idea who's gonna be the big dingus around here. Well, other than Sardinia and Corsica, but considering their name is Sardinia and Corsica, I get the feeling that they might not have their priorities quite right, considering they own half of France. Uh, of course, the recon keys didn't go too well. Uh, it did kick off just as we were ending our game because, you know, I thought I could stick around for a little bit longer, but I wanted to see what happened with a sizable portion of Sunny left in Iberia. Uh, of course, this does lead to a messy situation where you have things like the Rhine down here in Gibraltar, but I get the feeling, uh, hopefully someone will fix this whole mess. Um, Probably won't be me though, England's safe on our island. Uh oh, you know that whole rat realm thing? I don't think that's gonna stick around for too long. So for the most part, this is going to be a very normal England game for a while, but don't worry, I've got quite a few spanners to throw in the works, some very big spanners. A spanner so big, it might in fact crash the entire game. Uh, well, not literally. The game probably won't crash, um, but my career might. Yeah, that's right. You know, considering my current, uh, cop seek of the rap realm is 56 years old, and he doesn't have an heir, 
and I'm about to get War of the Roses because he's got no babies popping out. I get the feeling we might be slightly screwed here. Uh, hopefully though, me marrying him off to a 21-year-old Norwegian called Gunhilda might actually get him back into gear. Alright, so like I said, it's gonna be a normal England game for a little bit, so don't expect anything too crazy, so, uh, just bear with me as I do a sick gamer move. Don't worry guys, uh, the power of, like, foresight and seeing into the future has told us that, uh, you know, subjugating the Scottish does go incredibly well for us. Uh, it doesn't go too well for Scotland. Or the Irish, though. Now, obviously, we are England, so for my first idea, I went exploration, because even looking at Europe and trying to get involved in that mess makes me want to vomit. Uh, but that's also probably a mix of the sickness, too, though, so, uh, it might not be Europe, it's just not helping. That's what's going on in the rest of the world, uh, Mongolia, uh, well, they didn't last too long, and, uh, I, I knew this was 100% gonna happen. Oh, that wasn't there before, excuse me. Oh, uh, you know what? What better way to celebrate landing in the new world than expelling the Irish over there? Have fun, kitty. <clears throat> Alright, this is, this is day two. Uh, I'm slightly less congested in the nasal region, uh, but the fever, oh, it's kicking up there. <clears throat> now, despite the fact that Iberia is currently held by a Muslim dude, uh, that doesn't matter because they are still going for the colonial ideas and they've also got expansion. Oh my god, I'm gonna have to compete with a Muslim spade. So, uh, things in Egypt have, uh, appeared to have gone for the worse, but, uh, this map is looking very complicated religious-wise. Uh, you know, on top of that, we've also got Ethiopia. Ethiopia is ungodly huge right now. Oh my god, it's... Oh, jeez. Well, the eventual Norwegian, English Norwegian war was definitely bound to happen at one point. And what better time to do it than in uh, 1515, where we still haven't got the goddamn Reformation? Oh, never mind, there it goes. It fires in Susa. Where the hell is Susa? Can anyone spot Susa? It's right there, Susa, baby. Uh, now, I imagine you're gonna flip to Protestant and not Anglicanism, because uh, I prefer the benefits you get from Protestantism, which is, uh, wait a second, please don't tell me that sport in Norway. Oh, Thank God. Ah, oh, there you go. Scotland has been gobbled, and everybody's favorite nation is about to be buffed. Hide your rare cultural artifacts, baby. The British Museum is open for business. Uh, just doing what the British do best, you know, just handing out a couple blankets to the natives over here in North America. Trust me, I know better than anyone else. I, I've definitely been given a blanket by someone, apparently. Right, so I may or may not just have had a bit of a world war over the fact that Muslim Spain went ahead and colonized North America, but I finished that off no problem whatsoever. Meanwhile, in the rest of the world, though, France has still yet to really reclaim their place in the world, but they are pushing into the low countries down here, which is, uh, Something I don't know if I'm too happy about. After having a little war with uh, the Spanish down here, I did notice that Burgundy is somehow down here. Don't know how that happened. Uh, but the real champion of the hour... <laughs> <laughs> I hate it! I hate it so much! You know, in real life, uh, the English stole, you know, Quebec and New France off, you know, the French and had to deal with, you know, the French minorities there, but now I'm having to deal with the, uh, the Muslim Spanish! Oh my god. Also, Brandenburg and Sweden are uh, having a little hug box up here too now! Now, fortunately, the Aftasids did not own Gibraltar when I pieced them out, so I kind of <laughs> had to improvise a little bit. You know, the French are kind of harshing my vibe out quite a bit with their, you know, 34% control of the English channel, so I think I'm gonna have to do the, uh, the humane thing and just shoot them in the back of the head. You know, I feel like I've missed something at some point, but why is Paris... Parage... Did, are they secretly Dutch? Oh, that's not good. Um, why, why are the uh, Dualahids <laughs> colonizing Taiwan? Aren't they the... Um, oh, yeah, it's the Saudi Arabian. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, Catholicism. Not that strong in this game. Um, you know, I don't want to say I'm slightly turned off by the Mughals right now. What the hell's going on over here? <laughs> oh, did you look at that Denmark fort? Uh... <laughs> Uh, it's looking nice. <laughs> the north part is uh, still very much Muslim though. So uh, you may be asking for the man that currently has 5,800 ducats and is currently pooping out 240 ducats uh, from trade. Uh, well, you said you weren't going to be overpowered. And the, uh, the answer to that is... Yeah, I'm not gonna be. Uh, you see, when I said that I was gonna do something different this playthrough, I... I really meant it, but, uh... I, I, we're not quite ready for that 
just yet. Oh, well, it's, uh, it's really not peak Austrian hours when you've been exiled to Sicily. You know French Louisiana is looking pretty damn tasty. So, you know, uh, any chance to, you should know, beat up the French a little. And I'm on board, you know? I feel like 13 colonies is a bit underselling it at this point. There we go. That, that, <laughs> that evens it out a bit more. Uh, I can't believe we're living in a world where Byzantine Columbia is a goddamn thing. Why did the Enlightenment just spawn in Burma? You know, I've become so good at stealing everyone else's colonies that even my colonies are now stealing colonies from each other. So the year is 1728. I have 81,000 ducats as I am literally bleeding the world's coffers dry right now. And I think I've had enough of all of this. So it does come to a point in EU4 where you have 81,000 ducats in the bankerino and little will to live. Now we do have just under 100 years left in this game now and I will be playing to the very end, but I think for the uh, longevity of our mega campaign, me and my little rat dynasty need to switch it up a bit. Hold on a second. <laughs> You're a bit early there, Queen Lily. <laughs> yeah, what are you doing? Yeah, what we could do is carry on conquering India or making our trade empire even bigger than it is. But the reality of the situation is I need to play this for another two games and I need to keep it interesting. As such, me and the descendants of the Rat Realm and our Rat Dynasty have got together in the Rat Hole and we've had a bit of a Rat Meeting. One of the topics of discussion of the Rat Meeting was the fact that somehow the da Danish Muslims <laughs> are now in control of a bit of Sweden. But that's, that's a different story, different time. We, we're not going to look at that right now. Uh, instead, our topic of conversation was the fact that our colonial empire is getting a bit too big for its boots. And it's also, uh, well, they kind of want independence. And uh, we kind of want to keep together what we have. So we've decided on a little compromise. So before things get too out of hand, we've decided to send a small detachment by a man named George Rattington with a small load of probably half of my <laughs> my treasury and good old george rattington is gonna go ahead and establish the british commonwealth dominions for everybody and most importantly we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna be the guy to lead this endeavor that's right welcome to the new part of the rat kingdom the united states of america hey uh Amelie, that's a little bit awkward uh, when we sent george raddington over we just looked at his resume we did not actually check his credentials that much and i failed to realize he is a zero year old baby uh now obviously our idea of america in this game is going to be a bit different you see we didn't really have that whole revolution thing and just sort of peacefully went on a boat one day with a baby and declared ourselves king of america obviously though great britain 100 percent cool on this the rat dynasty must get stronger and better just any means possible and as such the united kingdom of america needs to go ahead and we need to expand our dong to the maximum ability in the hundred so years we have left to do so but obviously being this late into the game now there's not a lot left for us americans to gobble up and what there is left to gobble up is next to some uh, you know pretty scary guys but just like george raddington said when he stepped up that boat into america and declared it independent goo goo gaga as such I'm going to blow up China. That's right, because whatever I do, I don't think I can stand looking at the Victoria 2 map with the Mughals owning half of China. Well, more than half of China. They own all of China. Why, it's uh, George Raddington time to come in and you know, do some uh, good old American peacekeeping. Oh, you know, uh, the best thing about George Raddington... Oh yeah, he's got he's got that scary fertility. <laughs> oh, he's got he's got that powerful little rat dung. That's what's going on down there, baby. Uh, now the problem with waiting around trying to uh, take over China is that I kind of need the Brits on board. But the Brits are currently busy stomping all over India, so we're gonna give them a few more minutes before I go ahead and try to take down the uh, oh the giant Mughal stacks everywhere. All right. This ain't gonna be too fun. Oh, it was extremely painful, but, uh, <laughs> yay, American China. And I'm also hoping, because I've broken them quite a bit now, that people like the Koreans who are currently going in on them will actually, uh, break them up a little bit more, too, and, you know, take them down a couple notches. Just because I'm here to liberate you against the Mughals does not mean I will also shoot you. Hey, I might be just doing a bit of Middle Eastern peacekeeping, as it's known in America, just keeping the peace, uh, 
peacefully by shooting people. Ah, oh, yes. Now that, that is what I want to see. Look, I just realized the Mootapa, Mootapa <laughs> has a big chunk of India. That's pretty cool. Uh, I also haven't been paying much attention to Europe, apparently, the past 100 years, because France is a big thing now. An actual thing. And so is Italy. And revolutionary Swabia. I... I don't know what to think about that. <laughs> Westphalia. It's just it's just the game of the crazy tags, isn't it? You know, but the, the, this just, like... They haven't done anything other than conquer Russia. They've done nothing. They haven't pushed this way. They didn't push down here at all. When I took out Egypt, they went ahead and declared war on them and took this bit. What is wrong with you, Byzantium? Uh, I have noticed that Poland has, you know, quietly moved up the ranks. And also, I've, I've also just realized that France also owns a bit, a bit of Germany, too. That's just perfect, really. All right, we've hit the 1800s, and I don't think the borders will be changing that much anymore. So, uh, final years, guys. And uh, I'm going to have to fix so much of this stuff before we convert. Ooh, <laughs> Yeah, Swabia's not looking too good right now, but, uh, neither is Yuland, which, to be fair, though, never deserved to look good in the first place. I just, the, the map of Europe is just... It's something else. Hey, we've reached 1820, and this is where we will be leaving it for now. So, in the end, the American Empire was raised from the, uh, the dirt that was the British Empire, and also, I just noticed that Morocco formed, and that's a pretty fat, fat, huge Morocco. But, yeah, good news is, at the very end, though, I did go ahead and get myself the Rat Realm Dynasty. Yeah, baby, it's George II, the Rat Realm. What a, what a chap. Uh, so, obviously, just like last time, I'm probably gonna go round and do a bit of cleanup on the borders of stuff. A lot of people said, well, I say a lot of people, like two people said last time, oh, what's the point of doing a mega campaign if you just change the borders in between? <laughs> well, you little shitbag. The reality of the situation is that in Victoria 2, it's very hard to actually conquer nations because, uh, they cost a lot of infamy, so not a lot of expanding actually goes on in that game. So small little nations down here like the Yan or Mongolia become completely useless because no one will ever conquer them and they will just sit there forever. On top of that, because I don't do too much money in Victoria 2, like adding events and stuff, I like to switch around tax so they actually get stuff happening to them. Like Swabia won't have any events or decisions for them, but if I tag switch them to Austria, which they basically are already, they'll have a bonus. Uh, essentially, I like to try and push the game in the right direction, which has worked so good, so far, so well, whatever, you know what I'm trying to say. So yeah, I'll be doing a bit of cleanup. Uh, obviously, a nation like Persia wouldn't change, a nation like Morocco wouldn't change, any big nations won't change, it'll mostly just be, like, pest. Why, why do you exist, pest? Why? You have two provinces. Uh, but yes, yeah, so seeing how our empire ended off, we'll go ahead and look at the great powers. And obviously, uh, Great Britain, I left them up very strong, very powerful. Then it's Persia. Surprisingly, I guess they do have a lot of land and a lot of development, but I thought it would have been Byzantium, of all people. But, uh, no, they're fifth, apparently. Um... Yeah, that's not looking too good for them. That's all I'm saying. France actually made a pretty nice comeback. Uh, I think the Sardinians, or the Corsicans, or whatever, took out actual France, and then formed France. It's very complicated. Uh, I mean, Italy formed too, which is impressive, but you don't really have to spend five minutes with Italy before they just start revolting against themselves, apparently. Uh, I guess other than that, here is the, uh, the diplo- the, uh, religious map mode, sorry. Uh, I've converted a whole bunch of China. I don't know what I'm gonna do about China, by the way, when we get to, like, Hoi 4, but I will have to change China at some point, because <laughs> me owning half of China is not gonna go too well. Uh, but yeah, again, here's the, uh, rest of the religious map mode. Scandinavia has been constantly been going between everyone this entire game. They finally settled on this, which is just... Sure, okay, <laughs> whatever. Yuland, you know, you, you, you're up there, you managed to do it, you <laughs> converted a whole bunch of Scandinavia all from your one little Muslim province up here. Which is probably because before I left Great Britain, I allied them, so <laughs> I was hoping something like that might happen. Uh, South America is actually pretty uniform down here, there's nothing that I'll have to change that much, but uh, Mexico... 
kind of thought Mexico out. I, it just got worse. The entire time, it just got worse. Uh, but yeah, the Empire of America, the United States, led by our, you know, our George II of the Route Realms, looking pretty good. I'll probably go ahead and fix the uh, Canadian border a little bit, spruce it up, uh, which isn't too bad. It's just like, you know, the usual American borders. Uh, I won't change anything about Alaska and stuff because that's already owned by them. Uh, not sure if I'll fix Florida either because the English West Indies, they do own it. But you know what? Muzzle top. Uh, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed this next episode of the Mega Campaign. I wouldn't have liked to record it while I was sick, but I'm trying to get this out in time for you guys. And uh, ho hopefully, when I were in Victoria, uh, I won't be this sick and I'll be all nice and well. But if you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe button down below. And oh my god. Victoria 2. Oh, it's gonna be... It's gonna be a goddamn mess. Hey everybody, welcome back my gravy babies to the Mega Campaign 2020! First off, before we get into the video, I want to give a MASSIVE shout out to the people who make the EU42 VIC2 converter. Last time I did a Mega Campaign, I had to do a lot of this myself, but they've actually updated the converter and it is a BLESSING! So if you guys ever want to convert an EU4 game to VIC2, I'm gonna link it down below to the Steam page, which I'll link directly to, I think, the forums where you will download it, and I want you all to go down there, give it download give it a high rating and whatnot because it is a goddamn blessing so yeah massive shout out to everybody who works on the e4 to vic2 converter you guys are goddamn saints and a half because last time i went about doing this it was monkey balls all right anyway welcome back to victoria 2 everyone it's been a little while since we last did this but we are back and we have quite the few things that I've changed around. Uh, now, first things first, you'll notice I cleaned up the border with Canada a little bit. It's still a bit iffy here and there, but I kind of like that, you know, it's a bit unnatural, but I just fixed, uh, you know, this part and, like, this part over here. Uh, some bits still need colonizing, because it is still Vic do and uh, we'll just go over a few of the things that are different so uh one of the big things and when i say big i i mean it is uh germany is already here baby that's right what was swabia i was originally going to turn into austria but then i thought not entirely sure if the German unification is going to work like it didn't in our last mega campaign so just to be sure i have already whacked down the german empire and if they form it's, uh, it was well, a big if if they do fall, but, uh, this should hopefully make it so we'll actually see some sort of powerhouse in the middle of Europe. And, uh, we really do need a big powerhouse in the middle of Europe, considering we have to compete with a Byzantine Russia, a massive Poland, a France that's, uh, you know, it's got a little bit of Spain and a bit of, you know, it's got Belgium and stuff like that. And we've got a British Empire that owns a whole chunk of Spain down here. Uh, as far as everything else goes, uh, the Mughals are still up here. They're very powerful. Uh, the way the converter actually works is it does actually give you an option to make countries uncivilized and make your game more Eurocentric, which I have done because we are obviously playing a Western nation and we kind of want our big powers to actually go ahead and do a bit of like colonizing because not a lot happened down here in uh, EU4, unfortunately. Uh, China is just... <laughs> It's, a, it's disgusting. <laughs> it really is. Uh, one thing I actually failed to note uh, in my last video, because I edited it out by accident, was uh, Korea actually took over all of Japan. So, the cursed timeline we live in, baby. It's really horrible. Uh, for South America, I went ahead and split up uh, in Mexico, because if you don't remember, it was a bit of a mess. So, we actually have the French, you know, Mexico up here and down here. Then we have the Aztecs, who were... Uh, Basically, all the uh, the primitive guys, all the natives that were still alive down there, I just kind of consolidate them into one. Easily be manageable. Uh, then we have the Westphalians up here. They got a little colony. We obviously have the uh, Byzantine Colombia. We got Peru, which is huge. We got Argentina. And then we also have British uh, Argentina down here. We got the uh, Brazil by the Andalusians, who are. Uh, I actually have no idea how how this game's really gonna go. I'm hoping. It uh, gets very interesting, so we have quite a few diverse world powers this time around, and a lot of conquesting to be done. But uh, I guess without any further, uh, you know, uh, bits to it, we should uh, we should just really get into it and uh, start messing up the world. So obviously, we are a kingdom in this game, as we you know peacefully you know separate separated ourselves from Britain. You know, there was no hard feelings. We are still BFFs in our own little way, and. Uh, 
Uh, I guess in that kind of respect, we're probably going to be playing the game a bit differently than we usually would. Uh, another good thing about the mod is they do go ahead and, you know, add some uh, events and stuff, which is pretty damn good. We've got a whole bunch on here already where we can just uh, go click through all these where we're renaming stuff and, you know, blah, 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 blah. We'll get some calls on stuff too. That's good. Uh, one thing you'll notice is that the uh, start date actually is where we left off in E4, which is 1820. So there will be no researching for a while. So we can just kind of, uh, you know, focus on doing a bit of colonize and stuff like that. We should probably go ahead and start doing that already, really. Uh, now, because of the way it's converted and stuff like that, we actually, we still own all of China, and a lot of it is actually also state, so we can't build factories down here, although I won't be exploiting that too much, and I think when we get to Hoi 4, I'll probably have this released as a puppet, unless it breaks free in this game, and then I guess, I guess we'll just, you know peacefully withdraw, just like we did from Vietnam. We didn't lose, we just peacefully withdrew. Uh, one thing I've noticed that is very weird is the fact our culture map mode is all over the goddamn place. Uh, I'm not entirely sure why I didn't convert the culture correctly, but um, it, it really is. <laughs> it's okay. Apparently, we didn't kill all the natives in our game, which uh, is very un-American. As for our starting great powers, we've got the British Empire, me, Andalusia, France, Italy, Westphalia, Peru, and Yiland, uh, Jutland up here. They're uh, okay, I don't know what the hell is going on with this country, but the fact these guys are still up there, uh, yeah, they're Muslim as well, obviously, so it's just a... Uh Oh, it's a whole thing. Uh, the game also did go ahead and convert any wars that were going on, so we're already getting a whole bunch of people of annexing countries and stuff like that, which is pretty cool. Uh, it's good to see that, that we're starting off with quite a bit of conflict already. Now, obviously, because we are playing a imperialist America, I do want to go ahead and get myself a little slice of that Indian pie, because they are currently uncivilized, and uh, I, I that's probably not going to last too long, that's all I'm saying. Oh, that's pretty interesting. I don't know exactly what just happened with Britain. But India just <laughs> sort of yeeted themselves out of their control and I think they're having a bit of an independence war right now uh, Not even two seconds in the Germans are going ham <laughs> on the Polish uh, I don't think that's something I want to take a part in but at uh, the same time sure why not Oh man, you know it's gonna be a wild one when you've seen the Persians just overrun the Byzantine Empire I think you're a few like thousand years late now Oh, that's in what? Excuse me? Oh my god, okay, scary thing about that is I get some claims all over like the Middle East now. That's incredibly scary. Uh, I'm not entirely sure why they could form that without actually owning like any of Arabia, but yeah, fair enough. Okay, I'm actually kind of scared of you. There we go, peace with Ceylon acquired, and that is disgusting. Uh, I'm really hoping the British do take out India because having a westernized India, which it is, kind of being free up here, is not what I want, considering the fact that I'm pretty sure they're gonna have, yep, they're gonna have claims and calls all over India, so, <laughs> come on, Britain, please. Yeah. Five minutes into, uh, France and chill, and he gives you, uh, this look. Oh, God, I just had a crisis, and I didn't check it. Oh, <laughs> Joe, he just owns this big blob of Poland. Oh, uh, gotta make up time for, uh, you know, <laughs> keeping those natives around, I suppose. Oh, okay, thankfully, the British did take down India, which is a good thing, uh, for us, really, because now we can carry on with our, uh, little conquest and try, you know, <laughs> compete a little bit. Now, uh, one thing very interesting, I'm pretty sure, is gonna happen is the American Civil War, I I'm not entirely sure how it's going to go down, but it's definitely going to go down. Uh, I also noticed that uh, Mexico's here, and they're currently having their independence war with the French. We've also got countries like the Dominican Republic that have been released, and Haiti, which is trying to break free from Britain. Uh, they don't know anything about history, and they don't want to mess with Haiti. There we go, just uh, finished off Ceylon there, and I am turning my eye to Indonesia, but it is, it is such a goddamn mess, I don't even know where to begin. Oh my god, e even in Victoria, like, there, there's just no stopping the mess that is, uh, Mexico. God damn it, it just, it's already devolving into a million states. You know, the, uh, the actual culture map of Europe is, uh, I'm assuming more converted from EU4 than it is, uh, my land, which is actually now all converted to Yankee, so we've assimilated those damn natives after we sent them on their little happy trail. Uh, but interestingly enough, we still have, like, the Occitanian down here, we've got the French, we've got the Bretons, uh, Andalusian is actually, it's taken over a whole bunch of Spain now. We still have a few little French pockets from assuming the Burgundians who were down there, but uh, Spanish actually do exist, um, which is very weird, but they exist <laughs> in the enclave of little Brit British land down here. Uh, funnily enough, though, uh, I didn't get converted into uh, Anglo-Saxon because uh, I got the American Culture Group, which happens when you go to uh, America in uh, EU4, so 
Anglo-Saxons still exist, so it's still a world where the Normans didn't uh, take over Britain. So, uh, God forbid how the hell they sound with their goddamn language. Uh, <laughs> interestingly enough, the uh, the mess that is Russia. There is actually a little enclave in Vladimir that... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no culture whatsoever. Uh, There's just like a whole bunch of non-Russians just yeah, you know, just sitting around, just like, oh, what do we do? Eh? <laughs> Bit bored, just just watching paint dry. Oh my god, in the Middle East, it's just like a little little pocket right here of neo Italian. What the hell is neo Italian? <laughs> I just noticed that the German Empire is a primitive nation, which kind of makes sense because at the end of EU4, Swabia did in fact get nuked by everyone. Well, it didn't take long for us to usurp the uh, number one Great Powers spot. That's because people like Great Britain and all the other Western powers are all putting down colonial revolts right now. <laughs> it sucks to be you guys, even though I'm uh, the, the biggest colonizer of you all right now. Oh. I noticed Canada just splurted out, and I have cores on you. Don't mind if I do. There we go. I didn't want to take too much off them, because I don't really have the infamy at the moment. But look at those. Look, look at those pretty straight lines. Oh, my God. I feel so colonized right now. Hey, nothing to say American colonialism than a, a goddamn straight line. Oh, the uh, the Kraken needs are actually, uh, they're actually going to be a formidable power by the looks, because they are just pushing the hell into Persia right now. And I'm pretty sure they've added two stuff, like two little promises that you want to take up there so uh we probably should keep an eye on these guys uh you know i <laughs> i ain't too sure how i feel about being uh you know right next to a french person i, I i'm trying not to get upset here but you <laughs> you, you, you kind of missed a spot there there's a uh, there's a lot of good feelings in the world but honestly there is none like getting a cast's belly on someone with no goddamn infamy. Look at that zero point do it for me, baby! Oh, we also hit 1936, so it is finally time to be doing some technology. Oh, we just had a crisis and spat out Japan. Welcome back to the world, buddy. All right, oh, okay, that's a little bit early, but uh, oh god, okay, my entire army just flipped to the Confederacy. <laughs> Hold on. Oh, uh, probably not the most historically accurate American Civil War, but uh, but at the same time, to be fair, uh, it's not the most historical. American game either, as they're currently led by a rat king. There you go, that wasn't too difficult. Uh, I thought, honestly, I was 100% scared that all of China might also break free with them, but thankfully, that didn't happen. Uh, for the rest of the world, not a lot's been going on, bar France. They've annexed a whole bunch more of Spain, and they've also reclaimed some land in Germany, which. Uh, wait! Jutland! They've got bigger! Breaking news, the Germans have moved from just normal sticks to sharpened sticks if they, if they are now uncivilized and not primitive. Um, scratch any compliment I just gave France. Uh, they just lost the war to goddamn Italy. Oh my god, look, it's Jimma. My, uh, my favorite Korean boy band member. So, uh, I just decided that I, I want to declare war on the French, and you might be wondering why I did that, and I'll give you a hint, okay? Can you see anything in Europe? That's just a little bit wrong. There we go. Now, if I could have to come all the way back over here again, I will be taking a lot more. Ooh, it doesn't look like uh, things are going too well f <laughs> for the old Arabians down there. So we're at the uh, part of Victoria 2 where there's just constant Jacobin. Oh, perfect. As if uh, the communists, the Jacobins, the socialists were enough. We've got the anarcho liberals too. Perfect. 48,000 uh, communists have risen up in the Maldives. Uh, which is a province that actually has 52,000 people living there, so... <laughs> don't mind if I'm about to wipe out 99% of the population here. Oh, uh, I like the Italians, which might have been a mistake in the long run, but we did get called into a war against, uh, for some Byzantine Istria, which does sound like a good idea, because I've been meaning to clean up the borders over here for a while. Here you go, oh, why did they... Yeah, yeah, okay, you know what? Lower Egypt, you can keep it. It looks better already, though. I'll take it later. Oh, I haven't been keeping much of an eye of what's been going on over here, but uh, Korea's not looking too well, and uh, the Q, uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know if I really like uh, China being a resurgence power again. Uh, interestingly enough, Brandenburg also has the exact same cause that all of the German Empire does, so they can pretty much be a contesting power down here, which is kind of how I wanted it to be in the first place anyway. Anyway, and uh, they're, they're actually doing a lot better than the Dukes. Uh, well, to be fair, the other Germany was primitive. <laughs> this one is a great power. So yeah, yeah. For a second, then I thought that said the Republic of Uwu. 
Uh, so I just had to do a quick restart of the game and I thought, you know what, before I go back to the USA, I want to check out these guys, see how they convert. Because you can't see the religious map mode in the game, but if you go into the uh, actual country and you click on their specific provinces, you can see <laughs> that uh, it's 61% sunny. Uh, <laughs> yep, okay, they definitely converted the Muslim over. <laughs> yeah, something I found interesting is uh, Altinia up here. I don't know if that's how you say it or not. It's actually a great power and they've got 420 industry score which uh, on the great power list actually has put them above the Byzantines clap in the chat for them I, ju I just joined a, uh, a German war and uh, I'm actually at the war with the UK which uh, is the first time we've been at war ever oh not only did we uh, win the war for the Germans we also got them to release the West Indies which could be pretty damn helpful for us because uh, I, I do need to get around to taking this province at some point there we go any excuse to burn Paris to the ground and I'm on board Germany I'm actually uh, devastating in this little fight with Arabia right now because I'm defending in the mountains while also gas attacking them I mean, I'm pretty sure I'm not gonna win it but uh, uh, no, I j that's a 4,000 lot oh my Jesus, okay, I think we might win this. I'll stick in the mountain. Oh my god, I'm literally losing like 70s and they're losing thousands every tick. Look at that battle. I, I'm literally slaughtering the wind. So remember guys, always go ahead and research gas attack as quickly as you can because you might just kill 342,000 <laughs> You know, for my time in uh, having to kill, you know, 340,000 uh, uh, Arabs, I, I have gone ahead and also taken Hawaii off them. That's right, welcome to the Empire, baby. Yeah, I don't mind me just uh, single-handedly war-criming every single battle now with this goddamn gas attack. And uh, unfortunately, I don't think we'll be seeing a World War One in this game, just because the way the, uh, the great powers have worked out, uh, no one's really allied with each other, which is how great wars fire. So I'm not, I'm just kind of, well, it's not the worst thing probably but uh at the same time I'm, I'm not entirely sure how it's going to translate over into hoi 4 so yeah one thing i'm uh, pretty excited about about uh now you know playing some hoi 4 i got out rebels you know i just noticed something really weird france has 104 infamy <laughs> britain has 128 what? Oh my god, okay, I've actually managed to fire a great war and it's incredibly one-sided. So, uh, imagine World War One, except World War One was everyone from each side beating up Italy. It's always a good day when even the Brazilians have turned up for the seal clubbing. So this is the most cursed great war I've ever seen. We got the Argentinians, we got the Brazilians, siege it down Africa. We got the Cubans, Ireland hopping with cavalry. We got the whole shebang. Oh, we got ourselves a peace conference and a um Who's just popped out of the earth? Well, you're a uh, you're quite a few hundred years late there, Russia, but welcome to the party! Uh, CK2 just ruins Russia altogether. Like, St. Petersburg has a population of 199k. There's 94,000 people in Moscow, for God's sake. Oh, that was probably the uh, only great war we're going to be seeing in this game, and I, I am just... Whew, the world is looking disgusting. Now, we only have like 15 years left of the game now, so uh, no, nothing crazy is really going to go on I reckon and uh, I think because we won that great war I probably will fix the borders in um Hoi Forged a little bit considering uh I don't think this is a very accurate releasing of Russia and you know because Germany actually won the the battle of the Germanys uh, we'll probably give them Brandenburg to or something like that I haven't really decided also Latvia Latvia why do you why do you own us for a little rundown on how everyone's looking, here is the uh, Great Power List right now. As you can see, I am just dominating them. Absolutely dominating them. Uh, I don't, I'm pretty sure there must be an event or something that's bugging out the uh, the UK and France. Because they've got 122 infamy and France got 98. I, I don't know what's going on there, but I'm pretty sure it's, it's pretty much uh, screwed them the entire game. So that's kind of annoying, but... I think I'll, uh, I'll probably give them a little buff in Hoi Forge to make up for it. And, uh, yeah, it's been an interesting game, to say the least. Uh, not a lot's really happened, probably down to that little bug. But, um, the world, there's definitely some uh, borders that have been shaped here. So we could probably still get away with an interesting scenario in Hoi Four. Uh, especially since I just noticed who's currently the political party in Germany. Excuse me? Uh... 
Uh, <laughs> well, guys, the uh, Empire of America just fell. Uh oh! Uh, I think we just uh, we just uh, we, we got a shovel. We dug up the corpse of George Raddington and we threw him in the goddamn sea where he belongs. Put him in the trash. Uh, oh my god! Okay, I looked away for a second. Arab Africa! Oh my god, I'm just- I'm in a constant state of revolution right now. Just look at all these goddamn rebels! I, I think we're just gonna leave it up there. Not, nothing's really happening anymore. No wars are starting. And, uh, I- I think we just need to move to Hoi 4 now to fix anything in this goddamn game. Oh my god, no! Why are you back and why are you there? Alright, so, um... Yeah, a lot went down in this game, but realistically, I think a lot just needs to be fixed for this to work at all in Hoi 4. Uh, for one, I definitely need to rebuff uh, the UK and France. I don't know what the hell happened with their games, but they got pretty messed up. I also need to annex all these little colonial nations they released for some reason. I don't know why they did it. They're like, there's two Australias. There's two Australias! Uh, but yeah, I'll just give you a pan around the world just to see how everything went. But, uh, I guess until next time, guys. Uh, again, I hope you guys have enjoyed the uh, the mega campaign so far. This one has been a chaotic one, that is for sure. Latvia, why are you there again? Uh, but yeah, I'm still really enjoying this. I actually, I think I can set up a good enough scenario in Hoi Fork. And so we do have some great powers still, especially with the Byzantines. They are they have been slightly weakened, and Arabia being huge is also going to be a good one. Uh, same with Germany, because I'm going to give Germany Brandenburg since they won the Great War. Poland being huge as well, that's all good. Uh, I will fix Westphalia to kind of be the Dutch as well, and, like, give these provinces back to them. I don't know how Germany ended up with them. Uh, but yeah, I, I've enjoyed this so far. It's been very fun. Um, oh my god. What the hell's this? And I hope you guys have been enjoying it too. And if you have, I want you to leave a like and subscribe button down below. Let me know if you guys want to see another mega campaign in the future. I know you guys already will be saying that. But um, I feel like because the uh, tools are now a lot easier to go ahead and use. Maybe we could do another mega campaign at some point. But uh, again, I will leave a link to the uh, the e 4 2 converter. You guys want to check that out. Go have your world's desires completed leave a like on it too give it a good rating uh, very well done and uh, i guess until next time guys the republic of queensland doesn't that sound fun this is it the final episode, the, uh, the big pierce de resistance. It's Hearts of Iron 4, baby. All right, how is it going, everybody? You could say, how is it going, my gravy babies? Welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4, and we are going to blitz through this. First off, I want to give a big shout out to everyone that has supported this mega campaign. It's been a very good one. I've enjoyed it thoroughly, and I've tried to make a very nice scenario for us in Hearts of Iron 4 today. Uh, all I really want to say in regards to opening statements is simply, if you've enjoyed this series, please, for the love of God, hit the subscribe button and leave a like down below. I know a lot of you guys aren't subbed and whatnot, and you've probably enjoyed the series, so feel free to uh, hit the sub button if you want to see some more stuff like this. I'm always doing it, and I think as the converters work so well, I will probably be doing a mega campaign not too long from now again, but uh, don't expect it like any day now. Uh, but yeah, I will, literally, all I want to say is a big thank you to everyone that supported the series. Uh, it's been a very nice one to go through, and uh, if you guys have enjoyed it, I've put a lot of man hours into this. Just leave a like and sub button, and let's get straight into it, shall we? Alright, now, the big problem with Hearts of Iron 4 when going through a mega campaign is that uh, there's no actual way to get things going. You see, without extensive moddings and, you know, making folk street decisions and events and whatnot, the game game pretty much doesn't do anything. Uh, I've done extensive testing on the conversion and I am proud to say without my interference, absolutely nothing happened. So everyone in the comments is always like, oh man, why do you have to change stuff between things? It's because nothing happens. But with a whole bunch of uh, setting up a scenario for you guys, don't worry, I have made it so things now happen. Um... 
And they've also made a few uh, little changes by <laughs> Right, welcome to a new era in American politics, everybody, because that's right, the American People's Republic is now a thing. Uh, now, this is how originally the uh, the mega campaign actually converted. As you can see, it's pretty goddamn messy. Things didn't really make too much sense, and most importantly, nothing happened. Now, when I stress that nothing happened, I mean it. Nothing happened, but in the special little edited save game that I've made right here I've actually got a nice little scenario made for us that should hopefully work And if not I can make a few uh, adjustments on the move uh, now for what's changed uh, Honestly not a lot. I just cleaned up Africa just to make it seem like something actually happened in that time period Egypt uh, is still actually a thing you see uh, Egypt actually spawned over here with a seer and uh, to make up for that, because I wanted to release Egypt as a puppet when we flipped the communist, uh, they now have calls on Egypt, so they're, they're still a thing, don't worry. Uh, the only notable things that have happened, really, is that I've started the Germans and the Brandenburgians out of war, because uh, for whatever reason I didn't notice, they both actually started off fascist. Uh, same with France, France started off fascist, but I thought that might be a bit too overpowered to start off with all of Europe being fascist, considering Westphalia is also fascist, and all three of the Germans have the exact same leader. Even the Italians managed to go fascist. Uh, but yeah, France does get the option to go fascist. Don't worry, I won't spoil anything. The only other thing that's big that changed is that Russia uh, had a bunch of Byzantine land down up here. And then a little bit of Byzantine land down here. So instead I just switched them over. And now Russia is, the, it kind of makes sense, you know, and the, the Byzantines get to keep the Black Sea, which I thought made a bit more sense. Uh, now enough of the boring explaining stuff, we're gonna get straight into it, and the, oh, actually there's one more thing I probably should say, is that when we flipped to the American People's Republic, I didn't really think it made too much sense for us to have a bunch of colonial land, so instead what I've done is release them as puppets, because as you know, communists aren't for colonizing, but they are for pointing a gun at someone's head and secretly ruling the country. But yes, the America's People's Republic has risen and our years of being rat people has really kind of paid off because we are now physically rat people. Uh, now we, because we, you know, as you know, we were allied with the Germans at the start of last game, we've also been called into their war against Brandenburg, which we won't be helping out too much because we kind of have a lot of problems of our own right now. <laughs> One being, considering our conversion from Victoria 2, we have 233 units, which is absolutely insane. On top of that, we also have 69 battleships, which, um, a funny sex number. Uh, because our great communist uh, attributes aren't really known to the world just yet, it's just me and Columbia, which, uh, what a, what a pretty looking Colombian man. Uh, we don't actually have a lot to do in the world, except spread our influence throughout. Now, a good thing about the converter is that it does kind of actually try to go ahead and uh, implement some focuses that are kind of new and they try to make stuff actually happen but unfortunately for most of these they're all kind of random and kind of against other great powers which means uh, we, we don't really get anything but war with Great Britain but Great Britain does actually get some like war propaganda and they go down to war plan war plans against France and America but you know some of them aren't very good like Germany's who just War with Hungary, war with Bohemia, and that's all they do in the entire game. Uh, so technically we can maybe see some conflict throughout the game, realistically it's going to be very scarce unless I go ahead and actually set it up. But don't worry, it shall be fun. Uh, so uh, first things first, we should probably, you know, see what we're doing in the world. You know, we've got our massive army, massive navy, which we um, is a bit overkill, but uh, our, you know, our friends across the pond, the Germans, we will no longer be friends with because of... Um, differences. And uh, uh, one of the big things that kind of changed in the world between Victoria 2 and Hoi 4 is that the British are now ruled by a statue. They've well and truly lost the plot. I mean, there's also some weird stuff down here like Patagonia. They're, um, well, they, they haven't learned how to spell. Uh, but we're going to start off by calling for a communist summit. And we want to go ahead and get the Colombians on our side because they are kind of a splinter, splinter off of the uh, British Canada because Canada doesn't exist as a tag, though. It's just Quebec. But they do have claims all over Quebec, which is going to be helpful for us 
when the uh, eventual war against uh, Statue Man up here. Uh, the game also does go ahead and put some factions that kind of already exist in Victoria too. So we got the Alliance of the Byzantine Empire, we got the Alliance of America, which is mine, which uh, Germany won't be in very long. We got the Alliance of Arabia, and we got the British one. Uh, one thing going on is the unification of China, which um, is going to be led by the Chu Q. <laughs> and uh, you know we should probably be keeping an eye on that because uh, you know we have special interests in the area. And now while we do have an absolutely ginormous navy from Victoria 2, we should probably go ahead and think about modernizing it a bit just because, you know, it's all just battleships, light cruisers, and heavy cruisers. And there goes the German Reich. They've now annexed, well, they've unified Germany, and uh, I get the feeling they're probably going to be leaving my faction. And he got, yep, there they go. Now you see, because of the uh, massive uh, power imbalance in the world, being that I am <laughs> literally a goddamn superpower beyond imagine, uh, you'll notice that every one in the world will pretty much hate us and go against us. I, I don't know why though. Who wouldn't want to be led by an empire of rat people? Uh, okay, so that's the one thing. Uh, well, the first thing I've gone ahead and set up is when the uh, the Arabians actually went ahead and annexed all of Morocco and the Levant from the Byzantines last uh, in the very last of our game in uh, Vic 2. I thought, you know, they should probably actually go ahead and conquer, you know, Arabia, baby? <laughs> okay, we're already up to 38% world tension because the Russians also just declared war on the Krakenids, which is uh, definitely going to be an interesting war because I've actually equally matched them in power. Um, I don't know what we're going to see, but I also found out the Krakenids are actually Turkish. Whoa, that's a pretty goddamn big turkey. Okay, so we've got Colombia in our alliance now, which is going to be very handy for the eventual overthrowing of Statue Man. Oh my god, I don't know if you ever, like, naval trained 69 battleships at once, but it gives you 2.9 <laughs> experience a tick. I'm not entirely sure who this man is, but he's got a lot of influence in the goddamn world, doesn't it? We've hit 1937, and all things are pretty quiet in the world, other than the, uh, the Chinese throwing hundreds of thousands of men into the, U in the Yunnan Mountains. So, uh, well, it's not going too well for him. Hey guys, welcome back to Alternate History Pub. And uh, today we're wondering what if uh, Greek Russia invaded Turkish Siberia? You know, I think we might need to keep an eye on the French. While we, uh, you know, keep a little eye on the French, we also want to go ahead and, ex you know, expand our influence just a little bit. And what better way to start than in the Caribbean? Uh, I think they've been having, you know, a bit too much of a good time down here. Too many margaritas and whatnot. You kind of got to learn a thing or two about our Lord and Savior. Communism. Nothing like a bit of friendly American interventionism, you know? It's just exactly what Jeebus would have wanted. Oh, 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 that's a, uh... That's a familiar looking face, but uh, I, I, I'm not bringing you into my faction there, Mr. Maxim. There we go, we've sorted out the uh, the Caribbean now for the most part. Still some English colonies down here in Cuba, but Cuba is our sphereling from Victor, so we're not too worried about that. And now that we've puppeted the English West Indies, uh, they're still called the English West Indies. Well, well, the dream of a unified Turkic Russia is over. We we now get ourselves a Greek Soviet Union, which is um oh, that's incredibly underpowered. Except that part. How did I miss that? What? Oh, well, you know, it's good to see something st staying pretty similar in the world. Uh, you know what, Japan? I think in this universe we can be some pretty nifty friends. Oh, okay. So this was uh this was Star World War Two, by the way. I uh I didn't see this one come in, but uh the Byzantines won a piece apparently. But you know what? I have wanted to carve them into oblivion for a long time. Oh, looks like I uh got a bit of help on the way. Uh no, sorry, no thanks, Mussolini. Oh, you know now that I think about it, Russia. You would indeed be pretty goddamn useful to me right now. <laughs> Did you, Japan's name who faded? <laughs> oh, well, there you go. They joined the war. Um, uh, yeah, I, I wasn't expecting that one, though. Uh, oh, Tenia back from the grave, apparently. Gotta take down the French. Oh, uh, you know, I didn't think you guys were being suspiciously quiet. Oh, and uh, now we got a thing called the European League. All right, so uh, Central Europe, at least, you know, France are all currently friendly. All right, I, hold on, let me try and just wrap my head around who's at war with who here. So the Germans are at war with the Polish, who are allied with the British, and the Arabians are at war with the French, who are <laughs> allies. 
<laughs> the old tedia. Uh, but the, the Germans and the French are also at war with the Byzantines, I'm assuming because of Italy, and I'm at war with the Byzantines, but I'm not at war with anyone else. So that's the current situation, along with the Soviets and Japan, who are also at war with the Byzantines. We don't like the Byzantines. I think we can, uh, we can all definitely agree this has been a very long time coming. Oh, you know what, Byzantines? Uh, I don't know if this is more depressing than your actual fate in history, but getting demolished from three different sides was probably not the most romantic way to die off. Oh, they're also, um, also apparently democratic. I'm too sure about that one. Right. I have no idea what I'm gonna do to you, but it's gonna be goddamn amazing! Alright, just so things don't get too messy, I put on player-led peace conferences, so at least things shall be uniform. Alright, so we've gone ahead, we've carved them up, but uh, I, unfortunately, I, ju I just couldn't do it to them, alright? I could not watch them just completely vanish from the earth, so they are still alive. For now. Oh, uh, my bad. It's time for Civil War by Zantiboo! I'm, uh, I'm hoping that burns them to the goddamn ground. You know, legally wouldn't look too good if I annexed a another country as a communist, but, uh, nobody said anything about me creating a make-believe country to annex your country. And then, you know, also sending some, you know, uh, make-believe tanks that totally don't belong to me to, you know, make sure that the revolution succeed. Yeah, look at that, another country willingly joining the communist corps. Welcome, the Union of Red Thibs. All right, now the question might be, who do we get involved with next? You see, we've got the British and the Arabians who are currently at war with the, well, all of Europe, really. Or we got the Germans at war with the British. Like, which side do we really want to pick here? Right, I made up my decision. I noticed that uh, the British and the Arabians aren't actually in the same faction, so uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, Arabia, but uh, I'm going to need your lad. <laughs> What a fitting name placement for the Germans there. <laughs> uh, now, all the Arabians didn't put up much of a fight. The Brazilians, the surprise announcement, uh, they're, they're giving up a hell of a goddamn fight with their almost 231 division. Literally, the, the powerhouse of the South, Brazil, just won't fuck. Don't worry, though, I got a plan. It's simply just, uh... Just wait them out. Eventually, they will run out of manpower because they, uh, they just, they love losing it to me, apparently. Do you, uh, you think this looks fun? I can tell you right now, it's no goddamn fun! Uh, thankfully, the Arabian campaign's going pr pretty swimmingly. Uh, the Japanese are helping out a whole goddamn bunch, which is just weird to say, really. You know, if I ever needed a good picture of what hell might be like, I feel like I might have found it right here. Which, you know, is an interesting thing about the leader of Great Britain. Uh, not too sure about that one. Yeah, I just noticed another thing about their little puppet down here itself. <laughs> oh my god. Millions of Brazilians and dead Americans later. Including quite a few of my brain cells. And we're done. Now, due to the extensive plans me and the Japanese have, we have unfortunately made an occupation of the Iberian Peninsula there. Just because, you know, we, we've got a few, uh, ideas for the region. So, because I, um, I hated, uh, you know, uh, finding Brazil so much, I gave it to the other Colombia and then paid the African country. Now, as much as it pains me that I can't take out the British... Okay, where's Rommel gone? R rommel Yeah, as much as it pains me I can't take out the British just yet, I think we really need to take care of this massive blob of Europe. You know, it does give me a chance to take care of French Mexico, though. It's been a stain on North America for a while. Now, we really gotta hope that our uh, Soviet friends and our Japanese friends actually, um, deal with this quite accordingly, or else, uh, <laughs> it's, gonna, it's gonna be pretty messy. All right. I guess this is a this is officially World War II, isn't it? Ah, uh, yeah. We we also we we got the goddamn Chinese to deal with too. You know, hopefully blitz through French Mexico and go down to Los Altos uh, as quickly as possible so I can move this army over to China because they haven't joined the war yet, but they will. I don't know if you ever had all of Europe trying to kill you, but uh, it kind of looks like this, really. I like how for all of this the uh, <laughs> Czech Republic's just straight up chilling. Oh, uh, <laughs> that's why. They fell asleep! Oh, uh, <coughs> six million dead French years later, and it's like slicing through butter! You no, know, France, you think about it, this could have all been avoided if the Normans actually managed to invade England. It goes that far back! The best part is, I don't even have to invade the Italians because they're not a great power. Which means I can just go around them. Ah, oh, there you go. 
Hundreds of years of frustration at the French. And finally, I shot like 10 million of them. Sad part is, we used to be best friends with Germany, and we actually helped them pretty much form. But, you know, because they got a stupid little man with a mustache in charge. Not a rat! Kind of had to change that. There you go. Just how it was meant to be. Chang Chang. Well, that's it, everybody. It's time to rebuild Europe in my own way. There we go. Who doesn't want two Germanys back? All right, so obviously we've got two Germanys, both communists, which I like to see. The Union of Red Fiams is back. So if you really consider it Byzantium. It never left your hearts, people. And of course, Chang Shang, the uh, monster to the east, is looking good. Japan, uh, Manchuria, and Korea. You know, I felt like I had to give him some ink. And now there is only one enemy left. Uh, yeah, I also moved France up just, just a little bit. Just scooch them out of the way while I occupy their country so I can bomb England easier. Well, looks like I don't even have to wait for Britain. Uh, they got their own plan. And 721 divisions. 420 blazer. Definitely been a long time coming for us to uh, kick the uh, British butt butts, but uh, it's, it's definitely here. It's a little anti climax. Where are your units? After a few hundred years, we've returned, boys. You kept that place warm for us. Yeah, I, I just completely forgot that the British own Norway, so I actually have to come to Norway to end this war. Ugh. After a few hundred years of hiding in America, I think it's time we reclaim our empire under a different name. And there you go, our new world order has been completed. As you can see, the world has finally shifted to the right direction, being left. And the American Rat Empire has risen and taken over where we, we spawned from, which was uh, a little slum somewhere in the middle of England. Uh, but yeah, that's probably where we're going to be ending it. It's been a uh, interesting thousand years of gameplay here. We made it to 1947, all the way from 1066, and I gotta say I thoroughly enjoyed it. Of course we were super overpowered in Hoi 4, but that's just how it's always going to be for the most part. And uh, it, it was still fun nonetheless to uh, have a little war and uh, get to this powerful state to begin with. Uh, but if you guys have enjoyed this series, it is now over. I really hope you enjoyed all the twists and turns throughout. And I hope if you did enjoy it that much, you leave a like and subscribe button down below. And let me know if you want to see some more of this. Because I would love to come back and try it. And uh, don't be sad that it's over, guys. Because... Uh, Imagine at some point, it'll probably be back. But uh, until next time, guys, from me and the Rat Empire, uh, we're going to go jump into a garbage can, eat some raw bananas.